All right, getting back to this seriotone, chariotone, overtone special, the Dumble Overdrive special variant. And uh, I took a few days off to do some other things I needed to do. Been doing some porch renovations, been doing some business planning stuff for some designs. And uh, I needed to take a little bit of a break because it was wake up, have coffee, fix amps, make videos, fix amps, make videos, fix amps, make videos, uh, fall asleep at three in the morning, get up at eight the next day, start the whole process over again. I was just getting born, uh, burned out. But a couple of days of sweating up on a ladder uh, with a heat gun, scraping 100 years worth of paint off some wood has cleared my mind. I recommend it to everyone. When you get uh, crippling ennui, do some hard physical labor, then you won't mind sitting on your duff in the air conditioning fixing amps quite so much. Um, so it's time to put this thing back together. And the problem, the only problem I found with the amp was that V2, uh, uh, JJ, uh, had lost vacuum. And I spoke to the owner, and he didn't really want to buy all new tubes, but it was, you know, it's an option. Uh, so what we decided to do with my consultation is the three 12AX7s that are in the amp proper are easy to access and change. And you don't have to rebuy us a preamp tube. And people ask that all the time. You can change a preamp tube, 12AX7 for 12AX7. Uh, there's no adjustment necessary in the app. Anyone can do it. You can touch the glass all you want. Ooh, I'm touching the glass. I'm getting all my oils I'm on here. If these things were so fragile that they would die if you, if you touched them with your finger oils, ooh, finger oils, no amp would last more than five minutes. Just, that's not real world operation. Now, there are bulbs in the world like halogens, halogen bulbs, light bulbs, that you cannot touch, they will mess up. But, uh, let me get the autofocus off. But uh, you can touch a tube all you want. Uh, if it's been on for a while, especially a power tube, it'll, it'll let you know it's not a good idea to touch it because it'll burn the heck out of you. But there's no problem touching a preamp tube. So anyway, uh, the, the three preamp tubes in the amplifier itself are very easy to access. The preamp tube inside this sealator effects loop thing is very difficult because it's got all these screws holding the top panel in place and the things mounted inside the cabinet. It's hard to get pull out. So what we decided to do was to put a TAD 7025 inside here where it's all buttoned up. And the JJ that was in here will go into V2 of the main app. And if uh, that fails down the road, the owner can change that out without taking it to a guy like me. Uh, but uh, I wanted to point out something cool in here. I got some flack in the previous video on this amp because I don't just fawn over everything that comes in. I mentioned the good, I mentioned the bad. I don't care what brand it is. If, if the amp is built well, I'll tell you that it's built well. I don't care if it's a Bugera, though that has not and is not likely to ever happen. But uh, I mentioned that this Seriotone was a mixture of the very, very good and a few things that raise eyebrows. Yeah, like the the... IEC connectors are this really amazingly brittle plastic, and I found that they have broken on quite a few that have come in. Um, that's not slamming the company. That's saying, hey, whoever they're sourcing their uh, IECs from, you know, that's not a great part, but the parts are used well. So, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, my God, that's the best thing ever, but I will point out the things that raise my eyebrows, and I will point out the things that are really, really good. Here is a thing that is really, really good. You've got this PCB with eyelets in it. So it's, it uh, gets you PCB mounted components and eyelet mounted components, kind of the best of both worlds. It's a very thick FR4 fiberglass, that's great. It's got this one uh, preamp tube socket going straight to the PCB, but they have a little screw here on the other side. It, you know, that screw is a nut holding it in place. So the stress of putting the tube in and out is not borne just by these solder joints, it's borne mostly by this screw. That is a really good idea. I've not seen other companies do it. I may steal it myself next time I build something using PCB tube sockets. But for right now, let's put this TAD in here and button this up. And Well, actually, I'm gonna put it in here, I'm gonna test it once I get the rest of the amp working, and then if all is well, then I'll button it up. And why can't I do this? Oh, because I'm recording. Let me 
cameras in my way. Anyway, these belt and sockets are really, really high quality, but they take a lot of mechanical force to put a tube in and out. That's another good reason to have that screw there where that mechanical force is borne by the screw, not the solder joints. And that nice thick board doesn't want to flex. So, well done. Good job, Nick and team. All right, so the amp itself is powered on, the three JJs for the preamp tubes. The uh, sealator is powered on, but not connected to the amp yet. It's got the TAD in there. And uh, let's see how everything is working. Now, I, um, um, I will do a real video with a better audio with the mic on the, on the cab towards the end. Uh, for right now, I'm just testing, so you're just going to hear the lav mic, so clean. Overdrive. Just a little preview for you guys, but for right now, we're just going to make sure that the uh, sealator works. And the purpose of the sealator, or the dumbbellator as it started out as, and I'm not going to get into trademarks and all that stuff, but the overdrive special, this is the overtone special, but the overdrive special had a passive effects loop. So it just basically interrupts the audio path and it's high impedance and it's not buffered. And if you use anything with any kind of cable length, you will have uh, a loss of, of signal and a loss of high end. It'll lose volume, it'll sound dark. So what the dumbbellator, the sealator does, is it buffers the signal. So you go from out of the amp into the sealator and out of the sealator into the amp, and then you have a buffered effect send here. So in theory, this should sound the same as not going into this. So here's without the sealator. And here's with the sealator. It's got a gain level on the front. That's at 10, let's put it halfway. All right, so what's pretty close unity is uh, the return at noon, the send at full, and uh, the gain at about one o'clock with the bright switches off. Um, I think that's with the bright switch off on the, it is definitely the br first bright switch off. Let's see how I'm about the return bright switch. That's pretty subtle. Without the bright switch on the return, engage. I think it's a bright switch. Let me see what that's labeled as. I'm pretty sure it's just a bright switch. It is. All right, yeah, with that bright off, it definitely sounds darker with the, with the uh, sealator engaged. So this is pretty close to neutral. And since you're not switching this on and off in the in the uh, signal path, you know, it's, once you have this connected, it's always there. That's your level. Now let's make sure that the uh, effects loop itself is working. So rather than hooking up a, a, de a delay pedal or anything for right now, I'm just gonna plug the guitar into the return. So the return is working. Let's go back to the input of the amp. Remember when I'm going into the effects return there, I'm bypassing the entire preamp of the uh, ODS, so the sound does change. But what I was checking is that I was passing signal and that it wasn't dark, 
because there's not an impedance mismatch. That is a, a good load-ish for a humbucker. Let's make sure that the, the loop itself is working. And without the oscillator connected, we're back to There is a difference in sound. It's a little bit brighter through this, even with that br first bright cap off. Uh, but uh, the average person would be hard pressed to tell what it's what. I have, uh, I'm very critical at my listening because I have to be for this job. And uh, both sound very, very good, even if they don't sound exactly like each other. So I, th I think this amp is very healthy. Test for microphonics on the tubes again. Overdrive. Thought I'd let you guys hear what this amp actually sounds like. So I've got a 57 hooked up uh, and it's running through my ET65 uh, combo that you hear most of the videos, and it, it's really sounding good, to the point where I actually recorded about 30 minutes of just playing, because I forgot I was doing a video, and I was just playing it, um, which is probably the best review that I could give any app. It's a very well-built overall app. Got a couple of niggles uh, I'm not nuts about. I hope the transformers are better quality than they look. Uh, I'm not fond of the little plastic washers on the jacks. I'm not fond of the IC jacks. Other than that, uh, the construction inside is, is top notch. I've never been a huge fan of the FET circuits, it's a little bit noisy, but so were the real ones. Um, it sounds great, and uh, a good test of whether an amp really sounds great is just what the clean sustain's like, so you be the judge. <laughs> For those who think that I noodle or I'm not doing enough to show you what a guitar sounds like, I'm not demoing the guitar, I'm demoing the amp, and that's a really good sounding amp. If it's set clean and uh, you get that feedback, That's a pretty good sign that when you switch on the overdrive, if you want more of a Robin Ford thing, you turn that sensitivity trimmer on the back down. And we're going to play around with the level and ratio. I'm not going to pretend to play rock like Robin Ford, but... I think this amp sounds great. I think it's very versatile. 
I think it is 95% really extraordinarily well built. Built. The other 5% I will just agree to disagree on. Like I said, it, to me it's odd how many things are just about perfect in this and then they'll have cheap power jacks, receptacles. But maybe that's just me. A lot of things in this world are just me.